Hey guys, so sometimes I have a gut feeling that people will post about issues like the reserve list issue has come up recently and it comes up every few, I guess few months, I would say more, maybe two to three times a year. And then nothing changes. It's almost like social justice warriors, they, you know, they claim that they actually want to fight for change, things get too tough, and then they give up. And that's the same with the reserve list. Let me just put this in perspective to you. Wizard of Coast has their own legal counsel. I've talked to her. I believe she's still there. And if it gets too dicey for their legal counsel, Wizard of the Coast, they will kick out the Hasbro. And Hasbro, surprise to nobody, outsources its legal work to a law firm. Now, the law firm has many offices. It's a huge law firm. And one of the major partners is actually in Houston, and I have talked to him. And he was a great guy. He was exactly what I expected a $1,500 an hour lawyer to be like. Um, so he was very professional, very friendly, explained things in great detail, but also very simply. So in a one hour conversation, he could outline, you know, hours of arguments from a lesser lawyer in more simple terms that I can digest. And there's action items. So, like, if Tolerian community, if Wizard of the Coast wants to keep the reserve list, no one has the resources to fight them. They are a billion-dollar company with lots of lawyers. And with this particular law firm, you, can, you, you could fight them, but you're not going to win. So let, let's talk about this. Okay, let's say Wizard of the Coast, again, I don't know if they want to keep the reserve list or not. It seems like they want to because they are basically keeping it obviously right the status quo is that to keep the reserve list but let's say so for the purpose of this argument let's say that wizard of the coast wants to keep the reserve list and tolerant community college does not does tolerant community college understand how much money it would cost to sue someone like wizard of the coast and then if they were supported by hasbro does tolerant community college understand what type of law firm he would be dealing with if hasbro gets involved this isn't the nice, friendly little law firm. This is a law firm that's going to drain you of every single cent you have. I have worked on many litigation cases as a legal consultant. I've worked on many patent cases, many trademark cases, and I don't, I don't remember a single one of those cases in outside consultation for less than 100K, meaning we've always had an outside attorney help me on the case because maybe I'm not barred in California, I mean, the most recent case would be I'm not barred in California. I'm barred in New York, but we needed a Californian trial attorney. And therefore, we had to hire one for over four figures. That is exactly what happened. Again, I'm a lawyer and I wouldn't lie about things of that nature. There's a lot of things that I would talk about shit about, but not not legal stuff because I have the greatest respect for my profession even though I'm a marketing lawyer. But nonetheless, I still do immigration, as many of you know, and hate and whatever, but I am what I am. I mean, I'm very good. I passed the patent bar exam when I was 21. William Mary Law School is a top 24 law school again, so I'm happy to see my Almada climb his way back up. I think when I went, it was like 24 or 20. So yeah, it's about the same. I think it might have been a little higher. There was a lot of ties, if you will, back in my day. So I did go to a top law school. I went to a top university. Is it Harvard? No. But is it pretty close? I mean, is it close? Debatable. Uh, but regardless, I had a great legal education. I grew up in a home where my dad was a patent attorney and then now a contract attorney. I have a great respect for the law. So to see some of these videos, um, you have to view them as entertainment. None of these YouTubers, including Rudy, would ever fight Wizard of the Coast and Hasbro. It would probably cost north of a million dollars to see the case in court. Let me repeat this again. It probably would cost north of a million dollars to see the case in court. Remember when the judges uh, decided to sue Wizard of the Coast? Uh, this was back when judges actually got paid. Or they got some compensation. Well, they lost. And they lost so badly, they created a judge academy. Now the judges pay to be volunteers and pay to work 14 hours a day. I've never seen anything like that before, but that's how badly they lost. 
they were suing for wages. So when the judges sued Wizards of the Coast, what were they suing to get? They were suing to get wages to be treated as employees, almost like Uber, right? Like when a, that that's the problem of Uber, right? <laughs> Is the individual Uber driver can only get the attorney general or make some politics. They can do politically to make it change. But none of the Uber drivers themselves or even as a collective whole would put enough money to sue Uber to enforce health insurance, to enforce, you know, time off, to treat them as actual employees. That's why the, empl the Uber drivers will never win. Because they have the only route of victory is politics. And of course, whoever has the most money wins in politics too, just like in law, for the most part. So I'm not suggesting that his ideas are wrong or Rudy's ideas are wrong. Any of these ideas are wrong. They're good ideas, yes. And I too want the reserve list to go, but not for the reasons you think. Number one, if the reserve list goes, yes, of course my blanking card, of course the dual lands will drop in price the next night. Look at Tamagoyf. It's a $200 card one day. And now it's like, what, $40? Yes, if you get rid of the reserve list, my reserve list cards will tank probably by, I would guess, 75% or more, depending on what they are. If they're like bulk Miraz, yeah, that's going to tank like 95%. Uh, dual lands, I can see dual lands tanking, given today's prices, by 75% if they were reprinted en masse or as a like a $100 pack. You know, I, I can see $100 a pack and you get a random dual land. Yeah, I can see people buying packs like that, of course. And then also the opportunity to get foil dual land, which is interesting. The reason that I don't really care about the reserve list, even though I have lots of reserve list cards, you can check the channel. It's you know not to hide any of this from you. Um, is I simply don't care. Once you make enough money, like it, it's irrelevant. My magic collection, even though it's really nice and I like it, and you've seen the YouTube videos of it. In terms of my wealth, it's not relevant. Basically, what I'm suggesting is I make more in my magic collection every month at work. So if I were to spend time even selling it, would it really even be worth my time to sell dual lands? No, because the profit margin, I could just work an extra few hours at my job and make that amount of money up, right? So I don't care. I simply do not care. But now, would I be dumb enough to sue and fight that attorney, I have utmost respect for it. No, because I would lose and probably be in the hole for half a million dollars minimal to take it to court. And even then, you know, like, I mean, is it worth it? No, like, because like, I, I'm, I don't care if the reserve list goes or not. So like, why would I spend half a million dollars for it to go one way or another. Now, if somebody like Tolerian Community College has a million dollars to run this case up, go for it. Let's see what happens. I mean, it's not a bad case, but until someone actually has the resources, the lawyer, the law firm, someone has, you know, the ability to sue Wizards of the Coast and their heavy law. I mean, their lawyers are just incredibly talented individuals. I've looked at their, obviously, I've looked at their profiles and, history and what law schools they've gone to, what they've written, the quality of their writing, the quality of their cases. I mean, if you're a trial attorney, I'm not a trial attorney, by the way, transactional, then of course, every case that you've ever done is actually, if you can use this program called LexisNexis, there's also a program called Westlaw, it doesn't really matter which one. Um, and you can check up every case that lawyer has done, whether they won, they settled, what did they, you know, how did they win? What was the emotion they wrote, um, their, the quality of their writing. Like when I talked to this dude Hasbro, it became very clear within like 15 minutes that he's the real deal. That this dude can get in front of a jury or a judge and explain something in very, very simple details. And they would eat it up. And I would not win against him. And I don't say that about many people because I'm pretty uh, cocky, right? Pretty arrogant. But okay, so Tolarian's thing, he, it's kind of like social media for social media's sake or social clout for clout's sake. Nothing is going to come of it. No one will actually sue Wiz Hasbro or Wizard of the Coast one way or another. 
The same with uh, Dan Bach. He's not going to sue Wizard of the Coast to keep it. Because, again, why would you do it? It's already in place. They've already done everything you said. So it's kind of like the plaintiff and defendant. The defendant has the burden of proof. In this case, people who want to get rid of the reserve list have to do the suing. And which one of those people have enough money to do a case against that law firm? Mm, I'm waiting. I've been waiting for 20 years now. Or what was it? 15 years, 10 years since the reserve list? Urza's Saga, let's see. Urza's Legacy. Wow. So that was when I was in elementary school? Urza's Legacy? Urza's Saga? Urza's Legacy? Yeah, elementary. Middle school. So what? We waited 10 plus years and no one has sued? Like no one has realistically sued? There's been a lot of talk for social clout, but I'm talking about I see you in trial with a judge and a jury. No. That costs a blanking ton of money. Rightfully so.